Let's do some nitty gritty video stuff today. So of all the problems I see in videos, none seems harder to fix than bad audio. Our audiences don't want to watch a video that hurts their ears. So then it doesn't get any results and that's kind of depressing. Bad audio is like having termites. We don't see the damage being done while it's happening. We don't see it undoing all the other good work we've done. And when the shooting is over, it's usually too late to save the audio. So today, we fix that problem for good. Hi, I'm Steve Washer. Welcome to the One Minute Authority, the place to get your video groove on. Okay, so one of our professors in grad school was an audio engineer from the golden age of television. We called him Woody. Anyway, he told us something once that really opened my eyes. He said that 60% of the perception of a video's quality comes from the quality of the audio. I'd never considered that, but over the years, I've discovered that not only was Woody right, but that when the audio is really bad, it becomes more like 90% of the perception of quality. This is just one of the hardest things for people to admit to themselves, because maybe, you know, when they're setting up their shots, they're looking at the image, maybe the background, probably themselves, but they aren't listening to themselves speak. Then they shoot the video and play it back and it sounds kind of funny, but they're, you know, they're okay with it. The problem is their audiences may not be okay with it. All it takes is one bad experience and that person may never return. It's even worse if they're, you know, like an auditory learner. But if the sound is good, the video is easier to watch. It, make, it makes whoever's on the video look like an authority. It sounds like them in real life, which gives it an authentic feel. So having decent sound is not just a nice to have. I believe this whole technical thing should start with audio and work its way back to the image. So let's look at the star of the audio show, the microphone itself. Now there are two types of microphones. First up is the high impedance microphone, um, which today ends in a 1 8 inch plug. This is the one that most people use to make their own videos. The longer the cable, the more the sound degrades. But since most people use these microphones very close to their camera or cell phone, that's not a big factor in the quality of the audio. Now, the biggest factors in how authentic the microphone will sound are the frequency response and the noise floor. Frequency response is expressed in hertz or cycles per second. Since the human ear can theoretically distinguish from 20 to 20,000 hertz, the best microphones have that specification. You know, I've never seen any high impedance microphones that were even close to that. But when it's less than that, certain sounds, usually the low and high end, start dropping out, which might be acceptable, but not 100% authentic. But usually it's so much better than not having a mic at all, it's, it's hard to tell the difference, isn't it? So that's frequency response. Then there's the noise floor. That's the noise that the microphone itself generates. That's the noise you hear when you stop talking and the volume goes up. Hmm. You'll see this expressed as signal to noise ratio. It's not really a ratio. It's just how much true audience, I mean, how much true audio you hear after subtracting the noise floor. These unbalanced microphones tend to have a fair amount of hiss and electrical interference that comes from within the mic itself and the cable. Even more if the cable of the mic crosses the cable of the light. But as long as you keep the mic as close to the camera as possible and don't cross your cables, you can get an acceptable result. These are the budget mics, generally falling in the $20 to $80 range. The second kind of microphone is the low impedance or balanced and comes to an end that looks like this. That's an XLR connector. That third pin is what allows that cable to go hundreds of feet instead of just maybe 10 or 20. But what really makes these microphones worth the premium is that they can process more of the low and high frequencies, which is more authentic. And they have a very low noise floor, which means they process more of the sound you want, but don't add much to the noise floor that you don't want. But that's just the mic. Then there's the camera that has to process the audio from the mic. It's like this never ends. Steve, are you saying that the camera needs to process audio like a stereo system? Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. If the audio processor of the camera has a low noise floor, then you're going to get some pretty nice sound. You know, the Panasonic cameras I used to use were known for producing super clean sound, but they're just so expensive now. 
What this means is that if the camera has a uh, uh, suboptimal receiver, then it could make the audio coming in from your mic sound like someone to, trying to talk from under a blanket. I'll be talking more about this later. Right now, I'm going to make some recommendations for microphones. Anyone who uses one of these mics properly will have silky smooth sound from this day forward. For the last five years, in the high impedance budget category, I've recommended the Audio-Technica ATR3350. It's less than $30 US, has a 20-foot cable and an acceptable amount of hiss, which you can minimize in editing. It has a frequency response of 50 to 18,000 Hertz. That's really not too bad, considering most of us in real life can't hear a lot over 16,000 Hertz. But because it doesn't include sounds at the low end either, the audio can sound a little muddy. That can somewhat be fixed in editing as well. Still, for 30 bucks, that's a pretty good solution. For cell phones, there's now the Rode SmartLav. But honestly, I don't think that at $80, it's, it's really that much better. If you want truly authentic sound, then the low impedance or balanced mic is the only way to go. If you don't make videos that often, using a wired microphone will be fine. I like this Tram TR50 for my voice, but some might find a little pricey at $300 US. There are plenty of others. A lot of people really like the Auto Technica AT99 because it has the highest possible frequency response at 20 to 20,000 hertz. It's 269 US, that's actually a bargain for a mic like that. The Shure SM93, another low impedance mic, is only $155 US. But on the low end, the frequency response is actually less than the ATR3350. You can also get a low impedance mic in a wireless. If you're making a lot of videos, I guarantee you'll appreciate the convenience of not having wires to trip over or run into electrical interference. I use the Sony UTX system, it runs about $600, but it's worth every penny. It has a frequency response of 40 to 20,000 hertz. That's the mic I'm using for this video. Some people might think I'm crazy for recommending this, but for anyone on a tight budget, I would spend the biggest chunk of it on the microphone. And if there's nothing left for a camera, use the phone. It's better than some cheaper cameras. There are other considerations, of course, like pickup pattern, dynamic range, phantom power requirements, and how your camera processes the audio, but you'll stay pretty safe if you use one of the recommendations from this here episode. And actually, knowing what you do now about frequency response and noise floors and pricing, you can compare what's out there now on your own and make a smart decision, at least about microphones. Of course, there are about 55 other ways to get tripped up building a video infrastructure. Common wisdom when it comes to video, reminds me of what Mark Twain said. It ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble. It's what you know for sure that just ain't so. So instead of the one minute summary, here's the one minute surprise. For anyone who would like to painlessly start making authentic video, I'm putting on a brand new webinar where you can learn all the stuff you need to take this to the next level, like having the right equipment for you. People spend hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars on the wrong stuff. So we'll talk about how to save on the most important tools. We'll show everyone how to make shots that look clean and sound pristine, including how to make a cheap mic sound like an expensive one. You'll find out how many wires should be coming out of your camera when you shoot. Remember, there's a little bit more to the audio than the microphone. You'll discover how to select backgrounds that support the message instead of detract from it and a lot of other stuff, like editing software and lighting and how to keep this whole thing really compact. It's a technical tour de force, and we always have a lot of fun doing this. Of course, anyone who attends live will get their questions answered on the spot. That's my favorite part. And if you can't make it live, we'll put it on instant replay so you can revisit the content. Uh, there's no charge, and we'll have a great time. So to register, just click on the link below. I look forward to seeing you there. Till then, I'm Steve Washer, and thanks for watching The One Minute Authority.